Chapter 424 Trapped in Another World When Alba and the Crimson Crane had split up, they had gone in different directions. This was to give them time. For one, they were hoping Amir would be hesitant in who he would pick to chase, and then finally when he had made a decision, it would be too late. The thing was, from what Alba could see, Amir didn't decide to give chase at all. He just stood where he was while he went out of sight of them all. It's just like Telon said back then, he didn't give chase to the other two as well. What is he thinking, or is it because he knows we have to come back? Alba thought. Without saying much, she knew the others would come back to the place where they had left. The place where Ray's currently was. When she arrived in the small village-like structure, it didn't take long until she had seen the rest arrive as well, one after the other. Did he chase you? Lily asked. No, I didn't see him go after me, Telon replied. I don't think he chased anyone, Alba suggested, as the group were in the middle of discussing it. He might have not chased anyone, but I lost my weapon, Elvlin looked at her empty palms. The glaive that she would use had completely disappeared, lost in the sand somewhere, and too close to where they were fighting to try and get it back. A few of her teammates patted her on the back, and when Telon finally arrived, he let out a big sigh. Look, I really didn't want to do this, but if it will cheer you up. The Dark Magus was meant to make me a shield next, but you can have my slot since you lost your weapon. Wait, who said the Dark Magus was going to make you a shield? Wasn't that just your delusional big head of yours? Lily replied back. The light-hearted atmosphere where they would joke with one another, Alba was happy it was still there after what they had been through a clear loss on their end. Heading inside the room, Alba was hoping that maybe Ray's would be awake. In doing so, she could get some answers to just what was going on, or a direction, but she could just see Reno still sitting by his side on the floor. Judging from the faces of you all, it looks like the enemy was quite difficult, Reno asked. Yes, Alba answered. Was it because we didn't have me and Cronker? No, even if we had everyone, I doubt we could have bested him. He was a high middle stage warrior. I don't think he was high nine stage or anything like that, but he was a hybrid. Reno's eyes widened, and that's when Elvlin clicked her fingers. Right, that's the same reaction we had, but imagine you actually seeing the man transform in person and then having to face him. That wasn't good at all, Kaiser commented. Yeah, my arrows wouldn't even pierce his skin, Froma said. And he stopped Alba's attack with one hand, and I lost my glaive. Elvlin joined in. Reno could only imagine the strength of the person they had faced when hearing their stories. It did make him wonder, as a question had popped into his mind. Wait, if he was able to overpower you all like you said he did, then how are you all still alive? Reno asked. A shudder went through some of the members' bodies. They thought back to the fight when they had gotten closer, when they had made eye contact. At times, it felt like the hybrid could have done more. He could have followed up with attacks, but it was almost like he was trying to show them the difference in strength. This wasn't like the hybrids we know of, Alba explained. He was completely sane, aware of his actions. Usually, a hybrid would go into a frenzy attacking everything. Part of what makes them so difficult to fight is their relentlessness as they just push and push forward, trying to kill everything and anything they see, but he wasn't like that at all. Like you said, he let us live for some reason, and I don't know why. Alba was looking at Ray's, just laying there. He was certainly someone who attracted the attention of weird people. Maybe, I'm thinking that if Ray's was handled by him, he would be in good hands. He would be safe from the academy, but I don't know, and that's the issue. Alba explained. The others knew how they were feeling. Why would someone let them go just like that? Even for Pogna warriors, not even hybrids, usually they would be chased down and forced to spit out the location of another. Have you ever heard of a group known as the Bonum Society, in the years you have been a warrior? It was something he had mentioned. The group looked at each other, but nearly all of them just shrugged their shoulders. It's strange, right? I mean, the whole thing, and a group we've never heard of, even the fact that Rays can do these things. It makes me wonder if so many strange things have been happening in our world this whole time. We thought we were at the top, knew everything, 
but it's starting to feel like we know less and less about our world, that the top is further away than we thought. The top, reaching the pinnacle, had always been Alba's goal. Very few of the group knew the reasons why, but because she had helped them in their time of need, they were happy to help her progress with her goal. What I'm wondering is if the portal closes, will we be made into hybrids as well? Lily asked. Can that even happen? Hybrids are meant to be a form of beast and warrior, Reno explained. With the Dimension Boss dead, new beasts don't seem to appear. Although we have no data, so we can't be sure that can happen. In the middle of their talking, Kieser had been noticing something, an odd cracking noise. He had looked up a few times, trying to see what it was, but was unable to tell, but the noise continued and continued. Then when he looked up again at the noise, he could see that part of the top bricks had been lifted up and appeared to be floating slightly. Hey! Kieser punched Tilon, who was next to him, and pointed up. You're seeing this too, right? Tylon looked up and could confirm that Kieser wasn't imagining things, and soon everyone was looking above. Immediately, Alba and a few others rushed outside. Froma wasn't standing guard like she usually was, since everyone was talking. They thought this might be some type of power, but it was nothing like it at all. When looking up, they could see that the sky had changed. It was still blue, but now it looked slightly warped, as if the clouds in the air were going towards a single point, and the buildings next to them, all of them, everything including the sand was being dragged upward. It was happening at an incredibly slow rate though. One would have to pay close attention to even see that it was moving. What is happening? Froma asked. There was only one thing that Alba could think of. I think, the portal, it must have closed. Chapter 425, Breaking Through the Barrier Looking around, they could see it was mostly the area they were in that was affected. The strange warp in the air, filled with a light blue color, was centered right above them. As they looked further out of the village, they could also witness that the top of the sandstone had yet to be pulled from its structure, so the strongest force of pull was directly from underneath them. The portals closed. Did you just say the portals closed? Froma shouted. Then how are we meant to get out of this place, and how would you even know the portals closed? It's just a guess, Alba answered. We've never been inside a dimension when it's closed, so no one knows what really happens. One thing is clear though, no one from Pagna is able to get into this place. Maybe this is the reason why, because the whole dimension collapses in on itself. Alba's words weren't calming her clan members down one bit. Instead, there was a series of gulps coming from them all. She's right. We're stuck in here then. And if it collapses, does that mean we will collapse with them? Tilon expressed his worry, which was shown on all of the team members' faces. We still have rays, remember. And look carefully at everything, Reno said coming out of the room. He had used some extra cloth that was wrapped around the sword to attach it to Ray's. Then he wrapped it around his own waist and was carrying him on his back. Meanwhile, he had the weapon that was meant for Ray's held in one of his hands. He got us in here. Remember his fight with Phoebe? It was clear that the two had faced each other before, so he has to have a way at least to get back to the demonic faction. I wouldn't worry about things too much. Worry about things when there's a giant hole and a hybrid stuck here trying to kill us. I think we have the right to worry. Tilan exclaimed. Look at the structures. They're breaking at an incredibly slow rate, and the outer area isn't even affected. It might take months before the whole thing collapses. I would think Rays would at least wake up by then, Reno claimed. There was another issue, though. They couldn't stay here for months. Although their main priority was to look after Ray's until he woke up, they were meant to head back to the academy and help the others. They could be in danger right now, and they had no clue because their informant, Kronker, was on the other side. Wait, are we sure that the hybrid is still in here with us? Lily asked. If you think about it, he was defending the portal, right? He was standing right next to it. Maybe it was because he knew this was going to happen, if the portal has closed, then wouldn't he just go right through it before it happened? The words did make sense, but Alba feared that the hybrid was adamant on getting raised for one reason or another. 
Possibly he had a way out of the place as well. Not just that, but if the portal was closed, how long had it been since it had closed? They had been running away and were inside the housing structure talking for a while. The sky above could have changed slowly. Maybe the portal had closed right after they had escaped. There's only one thing we can really do. I think right now we have to at least check if the portal really has been closed or not. I know the other man is after Ray's, but I think we should all travel together and stick close. If he catches us on our own, we could be killed on sight, Alba ordered. Even though he had let them go once, who knew why or what the reason was? It was better to be cautious, and she didn't want to lose anyone right now, while strange things were happening in the place. When the fight between Amir and the Crimson Crane had ended, he had thought about whether to chase the others or not. The issue was, he knew that the portal would soon be closing. His mind was muddled. Should he try to find Ray's? He was confident that Ray's was a member of Alter, due to Charlotte and Himmy coming to meet him. He had seen them before. At first, Ray's didn't interest Amir much. He was most likely just a low ranking member attending the academy. As time went on, though, Ray's strength as a Pagna warrior was growing. A growth he had never seen before, and strange happenings that defied what would happen to a warrior were taking place. All of this led to Amir having more of an interest in Ray's. It led him to believe that he might be more helpful to the Bonham Society. In the middle of his thoughts, with his calm demeanor, he heard a little zap noise, and turning around after his transformation had ended, he could see that the portal had closed. Right after, he looked up at the sky and could see a change was happening. This isn't good. I don't have a way out of this place myself, Amir said. While in this dimension, I don't have a way to contact the others as well. Now Amir was even more perplexed with what he needed to do. I was also warned about this by the society. The most dangerous position for any Pagna warrior to be in was to be in another dimension once the portal closed. I might have just condemned myself. It's best to try and find a place to lay low for a while. Amir finally left his position in search of another building structure or more to keep himself hidden, waiting for what the outcome was to be. Eventually, the Crimson Crane, when getting closer, slowed down their stride. They were scouting the area, trying to see if the hybrid man was hiding anywhere, waiting for them to come out. I can't see him. The place is pretty open, unless he's buried himself in the sand or something, Telon commented. I don't think that's the reason. Kieser rubbed his foot across the sand and could feel heavy sandstone underneath. The village areas have sandstone underneath. There's just a layer of sand on top from the wind. But this is where the portal was right, and I'm not sure about you guys, but from the looks of it, the portal is no longer there. Froma pointed out to where the portal once was, where her arrow had gone through, and they could see nothing. It was what they had feared. Now they were stuck here. How long until their hunger struck them? How long until the dimension was destroyed? And how long until Ray's woke up again? Come on, guys, let's go back. It's dangerous being out here in the open. Who knows if that guy is hiding here or not, Alba said. The moment the whole group turned around, they all could see something strange occurring in front of them. Sparks were going off in the air. They continued to grow in size until a large beam of energy had occurred, and right in front of them, they could see a circle portal opening up. When it did, though, immediately a person stepped through the portal, wearing a white-colored robe with gold clothing, and on the top of his hooded head was the large letter I.